This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Thanks again. Uh, same disclosures, but if anybody wants to pay me, I'm happy to take money. Again, off-label use of devices. So maybe this case wasn't my idea, but you guys probably wouldn't believe me, so I guess that's not true. Okay, keep this picture in your mind. You can imagine potentially what's coming. Uh, unsupport, arms waving around, things falling out, yeah. Okay, 75-year-old Almon Farmer. Presented in 2010, syncope chest pain pneumonia uh, to the ER, noted to have a three and a half centimeter ascending aortic root dilatation at that time. Uh, recommended, got to start taking care of your health. Uh, had uh, uh, um, significant coronary disease, congestive heart failure, obstructive sleep apnea, et cetera. Follow up in 2013, recurrent chest pain and shortness of breath. Imaging now, this time they image the entire aorta now shows the ascending has increased to 5.8. The remaining of the aorta, you can kind of see here, this is just mainly the flow lumen, obviously, but uh, about five and a half at the hiatus. Uh, there's juxtarenal portion with thrombus, about seven and a half. Cardiopulmonary reserve is quite limited. Uh, 269 pounds, BMI of 40. When he uh, puts the monitor at home and he falls asleep, he desats to 72%. Uh, FEV1 is uh, 0.84 uh, liters, 29% of predicted for his age. Dilated left atrium, MR, TR, AI, but a normal EF. Uh, he was discussed numerous times in multiple clinics uh, around the Bay Area. Uh, actually, there's probably somebody's patient in the room that eventually found somebody silly enough like us to operate on him. And we discussed him in conference several times about risk benefit about doing anything. So we went through all the rigor, the, the rigor to make sure this was a reasonable thing to proceed with. Here's some more imaging cuts. So you can see this, the ascending is 5.8. There is a landing zone there in the descending thoracic aorta. Four and a half down here at about the diaphragm, the flow lumen wise. Uh, uh, about seven and a half here in the juxtarenal segment. Essentially a large sort of extent to uh, uh, thoraco. Here's this bottom part of this juxtarenal segment. The celiac, interestingly, is nearly occluded. The SMA is obviously widely patent. Both renals are open. Creatinine is normal. So here's a, so here's a rendition. Uh, here's the top part. That's where it comes over the oxbow. It's five and a half up there. It's, uh, se it's uh, 7.2 in this juxtarenal segment around the renals. It's about 36, 41 at that SMA. And again, the celiac's basically occluded. So, your, oh, yeah. so here's some different options, hybrid approach, uh, multi-branch EVAR caudally directed cuffs, uh, sandwich technique Lobato, um, uh, commercially off-the-shelf uh, graphs outside of the U.S., uh, uh, Starnes and MetSuite, um, PMEG for thoracoabdominals, all different options uh, that, uh, that all have um, uh, uh, some data on them. Uh, this was particularly intriguing to me. This is Kazi's rendition of sort of the octopus with multiple branches uh, uh, from multiple main body devices into a thoracic device to basically, this is a combination of basically parallel stent grafting with branch downward going stent grafts. Okay, audience participation. Open repair, hybrid debranching, sandwich norco parallel grafts, some sort of octopus configuration, PMEG, that only Ben's going to answer, IDE device, uh, or do nothing, <laughs> which is what I should have voted for. <laughs> Clearly, as you can tell from the title of the talk, wish I would have never done this. I'm curious about this one. I think uh, Dr. Tudor is the only one with an IDE in the room, too. So, uh, Okay, so open, oh, look at that. One third, do nothing, uh, debranching. Uh, these must all be my fellows here, sandwich, snorkel, parallel, octopus, 
Um, PMEG, IDE, oh, a couple other people. May, oh, uh, well, there's a couple of UCSF people. Okay, so that makes sense. And there's, and there's Ben, 3%. Good job, Ben. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so this is what I embarked upon. Uh, thoracic device, or, or uh, uh, kind of a modified octopus with uh, multiple branches coming out one of the limbs was the plan. Uh, so a main body deployed into the oxbow area, then through that a sea tag uh, to, to gain apposition to the main body part to seal at the top. And then from the arm, multiple, uh, multiple viabonds coming out the contra uh, gate uh, in order then to pick off the SMA in each renal branch. And then depending on how things went that day, we could either stage it and come back another day to fix the bottom, or if things were going great, we'd just keep going. Um, okay, so through and through arm access, there's the arch, there's all the angulation. I think people that have worked on these types of aortas know how difficult it is to track things around when there's multiple turns that have to be made. Uh, this doesn't transmit that well, but basically, the main body is in place here, and through that now the C-tag up to the to uh, to the seal zone at the top, and then some ballooning of the of the of the of the uh, uh, the, the abdominal bifurcated uh, 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 mating with the uh, thoracic device, and then just making sure that we're in the uh, in the in the contragate here to start putting multiple branches to come out uh, here. Uh, so the bottom of this. A gate happens to be several centimeters above the first target, which is the SMA. Slowly, one at a time from the top, we start, we start getting in uh, wires down into the target vessels. And uh, with some maneuvering uh, and some snaring to get wires around curves, eventually we get sheaths, basically uh, uh, seven French sheaths each into the SMA and each renal. We're looking good. We're feeling pretty good. A couple hours in at this point. This is confirmation we're in a renal, confirmation we're in the SMA, confirmation we're in the other renal. Uh, 018 wires into each of those. Things are looking favorable again here. Uh, three viabonds uh, each into their positioned uh, things through this, uh, through this one contralateral uh, gate of the main body part. Uh, confirmation pictures, make sure everything's okay. Uh, deployment or starting to deploy uh, some of these viabonds into the target branches. You see the one that goes into that renal. We got the wire going down in the SMA and the other one going into the other renal. We keep shooting pictures because we just want to make sure that, the, that we're not too far out into the branch, etc. Um, okay, look a little bit more closely here now. The viabonds are starting to deploy. There's the one that you see going into the renal on that side, the renal on this side. We've got a sheath down in the SMA. I'm pretty happy with everything. Uh, I finished deploying all these. We take a picture, and for some reason, it, the filling is not what I was anticipating. So I see flow going down into the left kidney. I see this SMA with a, with a replaced right hepatic, but I don't see the right kidney. So I try. So I so I go back and I'm I'm like this is the this is the late. If I go back, so so I shot these runs and then this is the sequence and then there's this one and the right renal fills a little bit later, and so something's not making sense because I shot from the top and I didn't know why the right renal wasn't filling. So if you look carefully and I'll magnify this for you, this is the right renal. The right renal branch has fallen out of the gate from the top. And now it's actually flipped down to the bottom, or down to the juxtarenal aorta. And it's down here. So then a couple people in the room were in on this case that day. Then we spend several hours now, obviously, trying to potentially from the top again get back or lasso that top of that viabond to try to drag it back up into the branch or try other various maneuvers to try to connect from this upper connection portion back into that left renal. So this is kind of what it looks like at this point, is my SMA and my left renal is in, but my right renal has fallen out and it's just kind of flopping down on the bottom there. So options at this point <laughs> are uh, uh, just to, and, and, and the concern I have obviously is now with only two of those branches sitting in that 13 gate, also a quasi-unstable thing as I've continued to try to come through that gate 
to snare and grab this bottom portion of this. So we persisted like we usually do, and uh, since the title of this is what I wish I would have never done again, um, I would have never done this again. So um, it uh, didn't work, and we decided we would just leave well enough alone and hope that this sealed and that we would leave the bottom alone and what we would try in a stage fashion, because now we're 10 hours into this, is we would come from the bottom and try to get into this as a periscope and bring a Viabon down into the iliac and finish the thing at another date. Oh, that's now what? Okay, so uh, she wakes up, she's not paraplegic, or he wakes up, he's not paraplegic, he's stable, and I get a post-op CT scan just to see, okay, I'll come back to fight another day. Uh, here's the post-op CT scan, obviously massive endo leak because we haven't completed the repair down to the bottom. Here is the branches uh, going out into their targets. And if you look carefully enough, so these are the, 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 uh, uh, these images, and here's this one. And if you look carefully enough, the problem is exactly what I feared when only two of those branches were inside the gate. They fell out. And so now we've got three dangling branches in the middle of the juxtarenal aorta. This is, here's the gate, everything's fallen out, the branches are just kind of floating in the bottom. Three branches floating in the bottom. This is like a bad dream when the radiologist sent me all these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, even a reconstruction from our, from our research from, the, from, from, from Chris Chang, who, because who, we'd been doing all these inventory exploratory things, makes a reconstruction. Hey, Dr. Lee, this is a real interesting thing that you made here. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Look at that. It just fell out because there was no support there. All right. So, anyways, we wound up converting uh, to open, and uh, um, I wish I would have never tried this. Okay. so. What did I learn from this, though? Well, we went back to the drawing board. I've been working with some of the Brazilian guys that are, that are real interested in this. We've been trying to come up with formulas for the sizes, again, of if you try to put three or four branches into a limb. And, and this is a paper that we have that's impressed that we're working on trying to figure out these gutters if you put three or four in and doing some mathematical calculations related to that. Uh, we've, we've been trying a couple of more things as the case we did two months ago. We, this time we got this one to work if, if three stayed in using, using um, uh, some Viabons there. I think this is one that we did this week where I think, I think the better idea perhaps is to transition each branch into a single branch rather than relying on sort of parallel friction to hold things in place. I wish I would have never done this, so thanks.